our cut flower garden. Take a closer look at one of the plants here. This is uh, commonly called coxcomb. Uh, the scientific name is Celosia cristata. There's actually several different types of Celosia. This one is a crested type. It produces these sort of coral or brain-like flowers. Um, another type is a plume uh, Celosia, and it has a more upright open head. looks kind of like flames. And uh, the final one is a wheat type, which has a more open flowering head, um, kind of like that of a, a wheat plant. So we're going to look at harvesting these. And I think this is a good example to show what happens as the flower matures over time. You can see the nice flowers up on top. And these are some older ones. And there are seeds in here, little black seeds developing inside of these. And depending on your intended use, um, you, you want to harvest at different times. This flower is a bit younger. Of course, the head's a little bit smaller. Um, but the flowers on the stem haven't developed so much, so we're, gonna have, um, we're not going to have as much seed down here. There might be a few in these very lower ones. Um, but if you're going to use uh, your coxcomb dried in an arrangement where they might be at, set at an angle, the seed could be a problem. Of course, I like to just collect the seed uh, from these. So let's look at harvesting and we could talk a bit more about seed collection. When you harvest your flowers, you want to leave uh, several leaves on the stem. So I'm going to cut it lower down here. And I'm going to take a some of the older ones so we can look at those seeds a bit closer. Now, you want to harvest before the edges start to um, turn brown. And on the plume type or the wheat type, you want to make sure that you harvest when about 50% of the flowers are open and the rest are still closed. And those will open up a little bit later. Well, let's go look at drying these flowers. The flowers are going to be at several different stages of maturity. You might have a nice crested head above and these smaller ones below. Uh, you could go ahead and harvest these. They're really good for use in crafts or even to put into a potpourri. Now when you harvest your flowers, you might need to do a little bit of cleaning up. These tight heads are great hiding places for insects. And when you're drying the flowers, they're going to probably leave on their own accord, but you could kind of scoot them along. Uh, this one I also found a little bit of webbing and I would just grab a sharp point, a fine point, and just kind of pull that right out. Another thing I wanted to look at are seeds. This is an older flower and there's going to be seeds in here uh, in these older, the older blossoms. And so just show you a little bit of what those look like. They're these small black seeds. Now as the flower dries, the sheath holding these seeds in is going to dry as well and the seeds will loosen. So you don't need to remove them right away. It'd be much easier to wait until the flowers dry and then all you have to do is simply tap on it and those seeds will fall out. You could collect them and plant them out next year. To dry Celosia, we simply bundle the stems together and we're going to tie them up. And then we want to hang them in a dark place with uh, warm temperature and certainly very dry. And we want them to dry as fast as possible. So you don't want a lot of humidity in the air and maybe even a fan might help with the air movement. But the faster they dry, the better they'll retain this nice color. And just simply hang them upside down in bundles. Now, Celosia is a very tender annual. So if you're gonna harvest them to dry, you wanna make sure that you harvest them well before the first frost.